and what internship you did. Perfect. So hi, uh, my name is Kat Wright. Uh, I did the Disney Hospitality Leadership Program in merchandise uh, this past season. So it started in June of 2022 and ended in June of this year. Um, I was very lucky and I actually was status in about March um, and I joined my current team over at Disney's Yacht, Yacht and Beach Club. Wow. So it was a full year. Are they always a full year? Yes. So right after COVID, it was only a six month program. Um, that first group that was the 2021 um, till 2022 group. I actually have a friend who did that program and they are now status at Art of Animation in the front office. Um, but now it is a year program. So it runs from June to June. Um, and it starts probably about the second week in June and ends around that same time period. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. So where are you from? Yep. So I'm from a small town about 45 minutes south of New Orleans. It's called Homa, Louisiana. Um, you know, it's a very small town. So growing up, I knew that I didn't want to stay there. I knew I wanted to do something more. Um, and I actually remember the specific moment I decided I wanted to work for the Walt Disney Company, which I think is insane. Um, but I think we all kind of have that moment of those oh, yeah. that are really passionate about the Disney Company, right? You're like, oh, it was this moment. Exactly. I saw XYZ movie or I went to this park. But there definitely was that moment for me. And um, my parents have such a funny story about it. And it just, you know, they love to tell it. But yeah, so I've been wanting to work with the Disney company since I probably was about 11. Since you were 11. Okay. Yeah. And okay. So we'll have you tell that story. And then <laughs> also, do you feel like as an 11 year old, you no, actually start with that story. Yeah, of course. Uh, so my mom likes to say that I met someone um, on my first Disney trip ever when I was two. Uh, that was from Louisiana, and I met her, and I was like, I want to work here. Um, but I don't remember that. My first time I ever remember wanting to work for the company, I was 11. Um, we had come, my birthday falls on Easter every 11 years. So I was born on Easter Sunday. My 11th birthday was the first time that I was an Easter baby again. Um, so we came for a whole week. We stayed at the Polynesian. And I remember that we were leaving the resort and it had started crying. Uh, it had started raining, my apologies. And I remember like looking out the back window um, of my mom's Nissan Altima and going, Disney is sad to see me leave and I'm sad to leave. I want to be here forever. And I, from that moment, was like, I want to work for this company. This is what I want to do. Now, my mom tells the story that I was two. And I was like, I want to work here. And she and my dad were like, mm, let's not crush her hopes and dreams. Um, but I don't remember that. So I claim it was my 11th birthday. And it was we were leaving. And it was raining. And it was that dramatic, like Kelly Clarkson looking out the window moment. But it definitely like I didn't want to leave. Ooh, that was such great imagery. I got the chills because, I mean, that's so relatable. Like you, I literally felt that like heartbreak of like the, your last day at Disney. Like, mm -hmm. so I totally get that. And maybe, maybe both happened. Maybe the two-year-old thing did happen. <laughs> you know, I'll give it to my mom. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am pretty stubborn. So I will say that it's believable. It is believable. I mean, it made it relatable. If if you found a Disney worker from Louisiana, of course you would have been like, oh, this, this is a possibility. Like, yep. that's so cool. Okay, so then kind of fast forward junior high, high school. At what point did you, like, did you major in hospitality? Like, where did you realize or what did you want to do with that? So my undergraduate is in public relations. Um, I went to the University of Louisiana in Lafayette. Uh, so we're the Raging Cajuns. Um, and so cool. I, did, <laughs> I did my first college program my junior year. I was having a really rough time um, just with school and life. And I love to say it, 
I, I love to ask my CPs, like, are you running away? And this is, you know, what you, you're you doing to, like, just get a break from college. Because college can be very overwhelming, especially, like, if you're ahead, which I was. So I was going to graduate a semester early anyway. Um, and so I actually came down here. I was a merchandise uh, CP. I worked at Coronado Springs pre-renovations we didn't even have a break room now they do oh. um so that's great <laughs> um but I worked there and I had fabulous leaders who I still am in touch with today um I met my two best friends uh one is from Canada her name is Lauren and then my best friend who still lives down here her name is Alex uh, we actually are hanging out today but that was in 2015 and um I wanted to stay I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay. I got an extension. Um, and my mom, you know, like, obviously you call your parents and you're like, Hey, like I was offered to extend. I love my apartment. I love where I'm living. I love what I'm doing. Um, and she's like, if you want to extend, that's fine, but you have to take classes. And I was like, yeah, no, I definitely want to graduate with my degree. And I remember sitting down with my proprietor, his name is Chris Pryor, and he is currently over at uh the contemporary and I remember sitting down with him when we were talking it out and he said go home and graduate Disney will always be here you know if you have the passion for it there will always be a job for you um when the right time comes but it's important that you go home and you finish your degree and you know he was right uh Disney is obviously always here um, they're always hiring so I am very glad that someone gave me that advice at such a young age because I think I would have been like quite a lot of RCPs that we have um, who come down here and you know maybe this is their option and this is what they want to do um, but I feel like I was one of the ones that went back home and got my degree but nowadays with the Aspire program it's you know if you aren't sure if you want to go back to school um, and you want to stay down here for your CP, like, I think that's the smartest thing to just get your degree through Disney who's going to pay for it. Like, like nowadays, if that was an offer, I probably would have stayed here. Um, but back then, I'm glad I went home. Yeah, I know. I heard, hear people doing Aspire. I'm like, that is too good to be true. Like, that's I mean, they pay for school. Like, you can't yeah. get past that, right? School's expensive. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But that is cool that your provider told you that. And um, yeah, I, I think that's what I was saying on someone else's interview. Like when people do the CP, I kind of feel like half the people are like, I just want to do anything but college. I just want to break. And then there's some people who like already come knowing they have an obsession with the company and they're like, I'm getting my foot in the door now. And some mm -hmm. people were like, I'm just here for the perks. That was kind of what I did. I was like, I just want to go ride Splash Mountain. Like, well, I, I want to perform too, but I wasn't performing on my CP, but mm -hmm. I was like, um, getting into Disney World for free for a semester doesn't sound bad. Let's do it. Exactly. There are quite a lot of perks. Let's yeah. be real. <laughs> okay. So I was just at Coronado Springs the other day exploring. I never saw the new tower. It's really nice. It's gorgeous. I love staying there. That's actually uh, my oh. partner and I's favorite place to stay. We stayed club level there and it's changed like how he vacations um i i'm bougie i'll go with that but he he is not the bougiest but oh, he has like, now become bougie <laughs> he got a taste of it i walked in i was like this feels really equivalent to like a four or five star hotel like this is really nice. it, is. it really is it's amazing that it's you get that like deluxe experience at a moderate price. Like, I just think that's insane. Like, that's a great deal. Yeah, I was telling all my followers, I was like, you guys should book here. If you're coming to Disney, come here. It was so nice. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about, okay, so I didn't realize there was the hospitality internship with different emphasis, it sounds like that you, you had. So do you know, like, did you apply for merchandise or did you apply for just hospitality? How did that work? So for the Disney Hospitality Leadership Program, it's broken into the different lines of business. So I applied for merchandise and front office because before I was accepted, I was a relief FSA, which is a frontline service advisor at Disney's Art of Animation um, for concierge. So I had such a passion and I learned so much during my time as a concierge that I would have loved to go into that line of business as well. Those were definitely where my passions lied. Uh, my previous experience though is in merchandise and food and beverage. 
Um, so the lines of business, um, and I could be completely off a little bit, but I do know for sure they have operations, which can be attractions, um, parking, uh, guest relations, all of those. They have merchandise, food and beverage, uh, lodging, which is going to be, um, like front desk. Uh, and then I know I'm missing one, but yes. So those are like the ones that I know of for sure. I, th I think custodial might be one as, oh, custodial and housekeeping. So um, those are together. Um, so yes, there is quite a few different lines of business that you can fall under. Um, but I will say my recruiter at the time, her name is Pamela Campbell. Um, she was actually the recruiter for both merchandise and for um, front office. So when we sat down for my interview, you know, the, your first meet and greet you have with the recruiter after they've gone through your resume. I mean, it's more of like a get to know you. So that first round is always just, hey, you know, do you meet the qualifications that you put in your application? If you do, let's talk a little bit more, find out if this is a good fit for you. And if it's not, that's okay. There might be, you know, this might not be your season, but there might be a potential for next season, right? Just like those little bits of like, who are you? Do you have the right personality, et cetera, based off your previous experience, just like very lightly touching that surface, right? Because you're going to dive more into it when you do your panel interview, et cetera. So for me, during that first interview, Pam was like, okay, I see you have front office experience. It's really interesting. I didn't pull you for that. And I was like, yeah, you know, not that I expected you to by any means. Um, I said, but yeah, I definitely have passion with both. And she said, okay, can you tell me why merchandise and like about your CP? And so when we were talking about it, I she asked a question and I brought up like my most you know, Disney magical memory I had from my first college program in merchandise that has stuck with me forever. Um, it makes me cry like every time I tell the story, but it, you know, we were talking, she goes, no, I can see it in your eyes. Like when you talk about merchandise, like that's where your passion lies. And I had the same thing happen with my mentor because they set you up. I expect in merchandise, they set you up with a mentor during your program. So um, in resorts, a lot of the time your proprietor will come from a food and beverage background um, instead of a merchandise background if you're a blended team. So Steve, um, who is the head of merchandise for resorts, thinks it's extremely important as part of our development to meet with a resort specific merchandise proprietor um, because there's a lot of line of business that we won't learn being in a food and beverage merchandise background um, because while our proprietors are very great and they definitely know how to run an operation and our business, they might not be as knowledgeable in one line of business over both, right? Because they're trying to cover both. So my uh, mentor about January of my program, um, my proprietor at the time kept at, her name is Stephanie Blair. She's over now at the All-Stars. Uh, she was like, Kat, you need to tell me what you want to do. And I was like, Stephanie, I don't know what line of business I want to go into. I just know I want to be a leader. Like, I love cast. I love what we're doing. I love all that. And I remember I went into my meeting with Anne, who is the proprietor of Boardwalk. And I sat down with her and she goes, you know, go tell Stephanie the truth. And I was like, Anne, what are you talking about? She was like, go tell Stephanie you want to be a merchandise leader. And I was like, Anne, like, I don't, I don't know if that's what I want to do. Like, I love merchandise. Please don't get me wrong. Like, I shop a lot. When we get new products, I want to buy it. And Wait, like, why do you think I that love. Anne, why do you think she said that? So that's what she, I was getting to. So she essentially was like, no, like, when we talk about it, you just, you have this, like, energy about you that you're so excited to learn. I can see you know your store, you know your product. Like, I can see this is where your passion is. She's like, I know that it seems extensive because the company has so many positions, right? It can be overwhelming at times when you're trying to like nail down what you want to do as a career or for the next three years or five years, depending on what you want to do, right? Especially if you've been an hourly cast member and you can transfer like every year or every six months, you can move locations or whatever. That That's a bit more options based, right? But she, at that moment, she was like, no, like you can make that decision for yourself and take your time. But like, I already know that that's the decision you're going to make. And she wasn't wrong. I love merchandise. I love everything about it. I love that I get to do it at my current location. And I think I would be really sad if I was in another line of business at this time in my career. 
So you were debating between like hotel front desk and that? Or food and beverage in general. Mm -hmm. Um, Just any of those three, since that's where my background lies. So in college, did you think that you were more passionate about front, like the front desk hotel stuff? I never got to experience it in college. Um, I, you know, in college, I knew I wanted a degree in public relations. Um, I just love the aspect of understanding because I think a lot of that you can take in a personal life as well, right? So PR is all about how you come across, how a company comes across to its public and how you communicate with your public. And, you know, what kind of, like everything about yourself and how that relates to the public, right? Um, so I think a lot of that can be taken into personal practice with you as a person, you know, how do you come across to your public? Um, and I think a lot of that, though I did want to work in PR, I actually interned and I wanted to do public relations for a while. I think that that's definitely able to be taken into the hospitality industry because with Disney, our guest perception is their reality. Um, right. So although I didn't have experience in front office, I really found the passion of it when I was a concierge because it's okay. it's super fun and every day is different. <laughs> Wait, when so you did the merchandise for your CP? When did you do concierge? Yeah, okay. So my timeline is very interesting. Um, I started with the company on my first college program in 2015, and I worked at Coronado, which I already which I gave you, you know, a little bit about that. And I went back to school and 2017, I came back. I did another college program in attractions. I did test track, uh, which I learned very quickly that attractions is not for me. Um, I can take guests being upset with me all day. I could not take guests being upset with me every other interaction. That just wasn't <laughs> for me. I couldn't make the magic. Okay. It was very yeah. hard. <laughs> it takes someone with very thick skin. Um, to be able to be successful in attractions. And that's just not me. I, I do have pretty thick skin, but I don't think I have the thick enough skin that attractions requires. I'm especially working an e-ticket attraction at a park at the time that like test tracker Soren were your two options, right? Yeah. Those were the only two you had. Um, I did my, and so then I went back, I graduated. I was within my six months after graduation and Disney announced the Aspire program. I knew I wanted to get my master's. So I decided at that point that I would come back. Um, I did a program again <laughs> because it's the easiest, right? You said toe in the door. So it's the easiest toe in the door for the company. And I did a photo pass at Animal Kingdom, which by the way, is the most beautiful park to take pictures at. I think it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Um, every picture looks good. The greenery is just perfect. Um, and then you I did everything. Oh my god! I did. Wait, I'm not even done. Girl. <laughs> I have done everything. So then, well, you know, the company is so vast. There's a lot of options. Um, so I, after that, I went part time in merchandise over at Animation Courtyard in Hollywood Studios. Um, while I was there, we, I got to experience the opening of Galaxy's Edge, which was insane um the new reopening of mickey's runaway railway um which was amazing and seeing our merchandise on our shop for that were so cute because that was part of my area um mm -hmm. and i got to do vending which i really loved you know being inside that phantasmic theater like dancing with all the lights before the show starts like you can never get those memories back they're so fun um i was laid off of course during covid um and i did not accept my call back uh, because I was managing a winery um, slash brewery during the time. I um, mean, I really loved it there. It was a great learning opportunity for me. Uh, but it came to a point where I was really evaluating like what I wanted to do next in my life. And the company posted a position for holiday services decorators. Uh, and I applied and I got it. So I worked as a decorator for holiday services for one holiday season. Whoa. I got to do what yeah, that super like? cool. Oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. Seeing the behind the scenes magic, like, you know, we watched the specials, right? They're on Disney Plus. They used to be on like ABC Freeform, like ABC Family. 
It's so cool. Like it is honestly the leaders there and all the cast have it down to a science. It's crazy. I know we got, I was part of the team that got to decorate the cruise ships. So being someone who had never been on a Disney cruise, that was my first experience with the Disney cruise, which was super awesome. I got to decorate Jungle Cru oh, Jingle Cruise for the holiday oh, season. Oh, cute. Yeah, it was super fun. And also the confectionery, that was, it was just so fun. Like seeing it all, like them putting the tree together and all of that, like it all happens in such a short amount of period of time. So we have to wait for the park all clear, which depending on the night could mean that park all clear didn't happen till 1 a.m. where there's like not a single guest left in the park, right? So it could be like 1 a.m. before we get in there. And then it has to be done by like 6.30 the next morning because extra magic hours start at 7.30. So mm -hmm. they get everything done in like five, six hours. That entire park changes over to Christmas in like five to six hours, which I think is crazy with the amount of decorations that there are, right? But there's so many casts working and it really is like down to an art. They're like moving stuff in, you're hanging it, they're moving empty things out while they're bringing in new things so that you don't stop like the whole time. It was, it's so fun. It was oh. a blast. It was a blast. As wow. someone who loves Christmas, it was a blast. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. This is, I feel like just in this one interview, you have told the listeners about so many opportunities they didn't even know about way more than exactly. So That's cool. why I always, I suggest it to my cast. I suggest it to my friends who want to come back to the company or like just anyone I talk to check my Disney careers, like constantly. I check it every day for my cast who like want development and have told me what they want to do. So I'm like, Oh, if a job comes up, I'm sending it to them. Um, cause I think development's extremely important. Obviously I've done quite a few roles to get to where I am now. Um, but yeah, I think it's extremely important and you never know what's out there until you see it because my Disney careers will post, you know, a lot of people didn't know, like we have EMTs on property and they hire for EMTs like externally. So say you're an EMT and you're like, I want to move to Florida. That's what I want to do. If they post an EMT job, like, there you go. And like, you might've never known that like we have EMTs on property or we have RNs or anything like in the medical field because that's not something that you would see right normally as like a guest we have so many back facing positions that people don't realize are out there but they're amazing opportunities for those that you know maybe aren't wanting to do a guest service role that they're like in front of the guest every day because that definitely takes a certain person um and you know to perform and to enjoy doing um, but there's so many other positions out there that people just that I mean, I don't even know exist until I see them on the careers page. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I know you don't think of like, oh, I'm going to be an RN at Disney. Like that's not your first thing to think about. Exactly. Yeah, because you, unless you know how services is a thing, you might not realize it's even there. Like it's, it's just wild <laughs> how many opportunities there are. But yes, so after I was a decorator of holiday services, um, the posting came out for the full-time bench for concierge. And I applied um, and I, because it was based off seniority when they pull you, I was like, I am not going to get pulled before the holiday season is over. Like, there's no way. Um, yeah, I got pulled two weeks after that, which was <laughs> insane. Um, and I was at Art of Animation for about six months um, before I started my internship in um, June. So I was there pretty much from... I want to say January to or December until June when I started my internship. So it was pretty crazy. And, you know, wow. it's yeah, you you never know how quickly the company will move at things. Like I always say, ride the wave until the wave stops. And hopefully when it settles, you're where you want to be. Mm. That's a good a good analogy. Mm -hmm. okay. So what's the let me clarify something. Does the professional internship program have to do with college? Like, do you have to have graduated within a year or is it not related to college? So it's the Disney Hospitality Leadership Program follows the same requirements the Disney College Program does. So uh. it's the same requirements. Um, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I know it used to be six months, but I think it's a full year now. So a full year after you graduate, um, or you have to be taking classes when you apply. So you were still in your year of graduating when you were working at Art of Animation? 
No. So at that point, I had I was in my master's program, and I made oh, the right. decision. Master's. Yep, I had made the decision because when you go from where I was full time with the company, um, I was leaving to be a project hire. So I was going to lose all of my benefits. So Aspire, um, my seniority, my days off, um, my you know vacation time. All of that, all the benefits you get as a full-time cast member, I was giving up to take a gamble on a program that I didn't even know I was going to get status at the end. Um, but after talking with my partner, it to me, and you know, obviously, I think that it's really important to always talk to the people that whose opinion you value most, right? That non-biased third party that although they love you, like they'll tell you the truth, right? Um, so I think it's important in situations like this where. You know, I was, I was 27, so I needed my own health insurance, which I knew I was going to get through the program, uh, which is the only reason, obviously, I could do an internship, right, um, was because I needed to keep my health insurance because I'm over the age of 26, and it was, it was worth the gamble to me. I know it's probably harder for some, you know, not knowing if you're going to get status at the end, which I know for a lot of the interns in my class, that was a really big struggle. And I will say a lot of interns didn't get status um, because there weren't positions at the time. Now I know some are still getting called and your leaders are really great about trying to match you with positions that will hopefully let you get into the LCC and then move forward again. Um, but it is a really, any internship, um, just because you're doing an internship does not always mean that you'll be in a full-time position at the end. I don't right. know how to do that. Not I feel like that. I didn't want that to come across as harsh. It just, it's like, it was such a stressor during our internship that like, what if I don't get status? I just signed another lease. Like what, you know, it's the same worries that you would have like after your college program or if you did an internship in another city, another state. Right, right. It's not like a guarantee. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of timing and availability and what they need right then. Exactly. So it's important to keep in mind, but in my, I mean, it's, it's likely at some point, you know, it probably won't be immediately, but just like you said, keep your eye out on the job board. And mm -hmm. so, okay. So you must've quit. Was it because of the industry? Why you like the, the internship, why you're like, I'm going to leave this full-time role because you want, cause it was more what you wanted to do. So I actually had applied for the LCC, which is the leadership casting call, which for any cast member in the Walt Disney Company, that's the move typically into leadership. And so in February, I had gone through the LCC process and I had gotten to the interview. Um, I had two amazing interviewers. Um, but for an LCC, you aren't, you aren't truly having the time to develop. You are ready to go, ready to be in the role, ready to start immediately. And although I have past experience within the Walt Disney Company and past experience as a manager outside of the company, um, leading in Disney is so unique. It's much different than leading outside of the company um, because the customer needs are different. We're a unionized company. Just the knowledge you need to have um, can take time to develop, right? And I was not ready at the time. I actually met with my one of my interviewers the other day because she is a merchandise and food and beverage proprietor. Um, I saw her the other day and, you know, looking at where I am now as a leader and where I was at the time that I applied, um, I wasn't ready. Like I was not ready to be a member of the LCC. I was not ready to leave cast, just like running off the bat, ready to go. I needed lots of development, um, which is kind of hard sometimes because you don't see that within yourself. Um, so when the internship came up and I was offered it in April, I knew that that's what I wanted to do because I knew I wanted to be a leader. That was what I wanted to do with my career. I knew that that was my natural next step. Um, but I knew I wasn't ready to be status where I was right then. Like I needed that year to learn. And through the hospitality leadership program, you go through extensive classes on development for yourself and how to lead better and more effective for your cast members. 
as Ooh. well as development into the line of businesses that you're representing, um, which are my proprietor, we would do meetings every other week. And there's an entire like guide essentially that is hundreds of hundreds of pages. I would equate it to like an OG, which is an operating guide for our attractions friends um, that essentially like ask a bunch of questions and you pretty much have to fill out all the answers. Um, and I think that that is what has changed in my ability to do my like position now is that I think I needed that development time. But like at the time I didn't recognize and I wouldn't change my internship for the world. Like I know that it it was really scary giving up full time and having all these benefits and being protected by the union and having, you know, loving my job at the time, et cetera. But I looking back at where I am now, I couldn't have picked a better opportunity and um, like path to follow to get to like being a leader where I am and feeling comfortable as a leader where I am. Got it. Yeah. That, so it, it was more, it was leading you more towards the leadership <clears throat> trainings and, and um, the classes they provided sounds mm -hmm. like really good. Yes, it used to be, there used to be a program that the company offered before the LCC um, that kind of was like an internal hospitality leadership program. It was called Emerging Leaders. And you went through all these same classes and it was, you know, you were in cohorts and you had this development. It essentially was the hospitality leadership program for like current cast members um, who were maybe not ready for the LCC, but were ready to go through that development process. And um, if that was an option, I think that I definitely would have talked to my proprietor at the time to see if I could have gotten into that because she obviously supported me for leadership. Um, but there was still a lot I needed to learn. And I'm very grateful that I learned it during my hospitality leadership program. Yeah. And I wonder if that's specific for that internship, because like the someone I talked to said there was classes available similar to the college program, how they said you can take these, but they were all optional. But mm -hmm. for internships, like, is it like woven? It's required. In? Okay. All so internships for, are just your line? I think just for, for the Disney Hospitality Leadership Program, okay. you're, they're required classes. So during our first like orientation to the program, they give you a PowerPoint and in it, it has all of your required classes that you have to take uh, during your program and the expected time frame in which they will be completed. So for most of the classes, they had to be done within the first six months of our internship. Some, you know, within the first two months, four months, six months, it was kind of broken into that category, but all of them essentially needed to be completed by that six month mark, which would have been December, January. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And like, who better to learn hospitality from than Disney, right? No, and I'm truly. <laughs> so truly. what would you tell somebody, um, if someone was listening in high school or college and they would wanna go into hospitality and leadership, um, what do you think they're looking for when they interview intern applicants? So for intern applicants, um, I would say that the company as a whole, we value our cast members first and foremost, because when we support our cast, our cast can give great guest service um, to our guest, which then in turn wants our guests to return. And that's the biggest thing is we love retention, right? If you think about your first time you ever went to Walt Disney World, it probably was a positive experience if you've gone back. Um, because, you know, we really, guests love to come back. They love to be part of the Disney family, um, whether that's interacting with the Walt Disney Company before they even come to Disney World um, through our different conglomerates um, or just, you know, merchandise they see in a Target or a store, right? Because now we have the Disney stores in Target. Um, so, you know, that first experience we get with the Disney Company isn't always the parks. Um, but when you're interviewing, I would just say that it's really important to have that passion towards giving great guest service. Um, if you're wanting to go into leadership, it extends past that. So I always like to tell my cast that I work for them. Um, without them, I don't have a job. And they supporting them is my most important job. Um, obviously, you know, also, you know, 
what if my boss has things that I need to do or, you know, the line of business ask for something that's important. Right. But on a day to day basis, I work for my cast members. Um, that still involves giving feedback, um, et cetera. But a lot of it as a leader, especially in your interviews, is going to be conflict resolution skills. So in Disney, we're all about telling a story. I know I've told quite a few during this interview. Um, but when you're thinking of interviewing, they may ask you a question that's going to come across as a yes or no, right? It's just really simple. Yes. I, you know, I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. And I can't. I'm, I apologize. But like, maybe like, do you like, just like, like, why do you like, do you like helping others, others say that's yeah. it? Um, instead of saying, yes, I like helping others. You should always lead with a story. Um, that's extremely important because we are storytellers here. So every aspect of our job is telling a story. Um, just, you know, our, with our themings as well as maybe theme greetings, et cetera. Um, but also if you want to go into leadership, uh, having a strong background in leadership. So whether that's holding positions, um, in groups or clubs that you have at your university or in high school, um, or even, you know, taking positions. Like I did a lot of volunteer work, um, because volunteers is extremely important to me, um, and volunteering, giving back to the community. So having those things where you've taken, you know, not charge, but you you tend to lead towards those leadership positions. Um, and that's what you strive for. I think that's extremely important. But I also think it's important to remember that movement with the company is not always linear. So it's not always, I was a part-time merchandise cast member. I was a full-time merchandise cast member. I was a coordinator. Oh, I sorry. I was a trainer. I was a coordinator. Now I'm a leader. Now I'm going to be a proprietor. It's it's not always like that. I mean, obviously through my story, through my Disney story, you can see that I've done quite a lot um, to get to where I am now. And I think that it's important to take knowledge from everything you've done in your past and apply it towards your future. Because without, you know, in concierge, I learned we have different partners. We don't operate as a singular unit. Um, within your line of business, there's always other lines of business around that you can ask for assistance because you're never alone. And I think that's extremely important to remember is that taking that knowledge, whether, you know, you worked as an RA in college and then you, you know, after that you worked at McDonald's and you, you know, worked the drive through and you took orders. Like there's so much you can take from any position you had and apply it towards your future um, and be able to use that knowledge in any role you move forward in because the appreciation you have um, as an RA for your, say, the people who live on your floor and the situations you may have to go through on your floor versus, you know, working as a cashier at McDonald's and you're making the food. And so food safety is your number one. And then, you know, you have to be able to balance making food while also taking orders while also making sure the food gets out. It is, you know, in a quick amount of time. So it's making sure you're leveraging every opportunity you've previously had into those interviews and drawing from all of that experience, because you may not realize the two months you spent at a job um, working at a, I don't know, a summer camp, is important to what you're going to be doing as a leader three years from now. But you know what? You probably learned something during that summer camp that is going to apply to leadership because you, you know, have quite a few casts underneath you and or that you work with on a daily basis. Um, you have quite a few guests you're going to see on a daily basis. If you work in resorts, you may see them every day. But Absolutely. it's extremely important to remember that, you know, even if you feel like it's not a lot of knowledge that you gained from something you probably will use it in the future definitely it's a you know never underestimate what you learn and it's um it's so easy to be like oh i just was this i just did this but like mm -hmm. it's how you present it like they have no idea you can you can tell the story in the interview and make it mean whatever and it, it i also you know from this journey i feel like humility is an important quality like 
especially today, people just want immediately to have their dream job tomorrow. And like, Mm -hmm. you have to do, like, you have to do the work. You have to, it takes Mm -hmm. time. And so, you know, be grateful for where you are while knowing where you want to go is really important. But wow, we've learned so much today. And if I know I feel so bad, I'm like going on tangents, but to, you know, if I can add one more thing um, off of what you just said, uh, my previous proprietor from when I was a concierge, when we were talking about leadership development, um, there's two amazing words of advice that Kelly gave me. One is you are your voice. No one can read your mind. No one can know what you want to do. No one can just pull that off your mind, right? If you're like, I want to be a leader, but you are not voicing that and you are not asking for feedback and you are not working on your development and making sure that every person you meet knows that you want to be a leader and that's what you want to do one day and that you are working towards that. That is the only way that something is going to happen for you because you will have people in your corner that because they know that's what you want to do. Like you can, you can work on your own development, but if you're not voicing that and you're not, you know, Hey, I want to be a leader one day. Do you have any feedback for me? Or hi, my name is Kat. You know, I'm really interested in learning about what you do when it comes to like other lines of businesses or trying to set up, you know, shadows or anything like that. Once you're into that portion in your development journey, but it's extremely to remember, uh, important to remember that any feedback is good feedback, even if it's negative feedback at the time, because you might not realize like how you're coming across to someone or, you know, that the way you said something, you didn't mean it that way it came across, but that's how it came across. Like that's, that was something I had to learn that like, I didn't realize that the way that I was saying something at one point was coming across as like, you have to do this right now. Right. But I wasn't meaning it like that. I just was like, I meant to say, Hey, like, if you don't mind when you get a second, you know, taking care of X, Y, Z, or, Hey, are you working on something right now? Oh, you are. Okay. Well, when you're done, do you mind coming find me? I have another project I'd like for you to work on things like that. Instead of being like, Hey, can you do this? Like Mm -hmm. to someone that's like, oh, wait, I was already working on something. Right. And you don't realize that that's how you just came across. Um, So that's extremely important. But the second thing is, and this is, you know, something I had to realize in my development journey, obviously, with not getting into the LCC and then deciding to go into the internship is that someone who is not ready, but is pushed can move forward. Right. But eventually they will fail. Eventually, there will be a point where they get somewhere and then they'll fail at that position. So sometimes it's important to remember that you need to take a step back um, to develop further, because although you may feel like you're ready, if you're not actually prepared, eventually, like you will struggle a lot worse than if you were prepared. So sometimes it's, you know, as you said, like you want to move, you want to be there like right now, right? That like instant gratification. But Everything worth having in life is worth working for. Um, And that sometimes can mean reflecting on your own personal development. I mean, it's never fun to be like, well, this is where I struggle. Um, But it's extremely important, like as a leader, because you have to remember, like, you are human and your cast members are human. And, you know, we all have good days and we all have bad days, but we're all there for the same common goal. And you have to realize that, like, sometimes to get forward, you have to do personal reflection, which can always be a step back if it needs to be. Oh, yeah. No, that is I'm all about that. That's what this podcast is about, too. And I'm going to have people uh, I'm going to make when I make this intro, I'm going to say, take notes, because guys, you know, so much like, I think it's so important to learn from or like, be open to the advice of someone who's been in the position you want to be in. So if you guys want to do anything, any of the 1500 jobs at Disney that she had, you know, Um, it's true. (laughs) So it's true. Um, So now I'm just going to end with like this fun rapid fire question just for fun. It's just fun. Okay. So um, first is favorite Disney resort. Oh, easy. Um, I really love the Polynesian. Okay, favorite uh, live action Disney movie? 
that one's hard. Um, my favorite live action is probably, oh, I really liked the Cinderella. I don't know if that's actually Disney owned. So I do apologize if it's not. I think it is. Like the Lily is one, it? Lily yeah. Jane. Mm-hmm. Yes. She's just a beautiful singer. singer. Yeah. Um, favorite Disney restaurant? Ohana. <laughs> oh, what? Well, I haven't been there yet. Oh, you have to go. You have oh. to go. I will. I will. Favorite um, Disney. Okay, in I'm gonna say favorite roller coaster out of the few in the Disney parks. Ooh, I really like rock and roller coasters. It's the first roller coaster I ever went on. Okay. Um, if you had to spend a full okay if family comes into town people have never been to disney and they didn't care what park they went to and they're like you choose which park would you want to go to for like a full-on day for a full-on day if they'd never been to disney you have to go to magic kingdom Um, my favorite park is animal kingdom okay yeah animal kingdom has something else what's your favorite disney show disney park show disney weddings oh uh... If it has to be a Disney park show, it's the Disney weddings. Okay. And the last one is, who's your favorite character to meet? Elsa. She's got a special place in my heart. I always bring her Norwegian chocolates when I go to meet her. Oh, Oh, I bet she loves that. Oh, the performers love it so much. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. Um, Kat, thank you so much. I really appreciate like all the detail you gave us and I learned so much and I'm so excited um, to put this out. And if people want to ask you a question, like for you to elaborate on something they heard, can they reach out to you on a certain platform? Yeah. So you guys are more than welcome to reach out to me on um, LinkedIn or Instagram. Um, I'm really bad about LinkedIn like responding so I do apologize Instagram is probably the easiest one um but my handle is wowcat w-o-w-k-a-t-t or on Instagram I think it's oh it's just under cat right um but, I'll, link yeah. it. I'll put your Instagram um, link yeah I would I would honestly message me on LinkedIn just to keep it professional let's do that LinkedIn oh LinkedIn um, let's do LinkedIn okay. yeah I was like, if you can scrub out the part. But yeah, I would definitely message me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm always here. I always, I help. I, I, development's important. Cool. All right. Awesome. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Bye. Of course. Bye.